I can do a question. The Lord Bishop of Durham. Uh, my Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, by convention, the September inflation figure is used to uprate benefits. Any fluctuations year on year smooth out over time. In 2022 23, we will spend an extra £2.6 billion on benefits for people of working age following the annual uprating exercise. We are providing £12 billion this year and next to help the in the cost of living. In addition, we recently announced support worth £9.1 billion next year to help households with rising energy costs. I thank the noble lady of the minister for the answer. Um, we are by now aware that the cost of living crisis is going to hit every single one of us. But Joseph Rowntree Foundation, Child Poverty Action Group, the Resolution Foundation, the New Economics Foundation all agree that it's going to hit families with children, particularly those with more than two children, hardest. And they will see a real terms cut to their benefits this year. There are also further warnings of inflation of over 10% for the poorest families if the Ukrainian conflict continues. And there's no plans for further mitigation from the government. In this climate, can the minister point us to the parameters which demonstrate the ongoing apparent success of the two-child limit, or does she agree that now is the time simply to scrap it? Uh, my Lords, the Government understands that people are concerned about pressure on household budgets and is taking action to help. Uh, the Government are clo working closely and monitoring the situation together with the Bank of England. This government are also putting play in place policies to help these families uh, and individuals meet the rising costs, costs of living, such as increasing the national living wage and cutting the taper rate in universal credit, my lords. As far as the two-child policy is concerned, I'm really sorry to um, disappoint the Right Reverend Perrett, but we have no plans to change that. Cutting back on basics in the face of the cost of living crisis. But what about parents struggling on inadequate benefits, the real value of which is set to fall by over 4% over the coming year? Many of them are already cutting back to the bone and can't wait for next year's smoothing. What are they supposed to do if the government refuses to act on the growing calls for an additional increase in benefits? Yeah. My Lords, the government is spending £6.6 .6 billion in this year in increasing benefit rates, 2.6 billion of that on working age benefits and 4 billion on penitentiary benefits. The uprating order, I agree, has only, has only gone by 3.1%, but we have increased other um, rates, uh, as I have explained to, to the, the Right Reverend Prelate, and we will continue to monitor it, and if necessary, we will look to further, uh, further uh, details. My Lord, my Lord. Uh, the Right Reverend Prelate's question raises the problem of cash flow. When inflation is climbing, as it is now, families are lagging behind the curve. So what is the government doing to help them with this negative cash flow at the present time? Also, the obvious way to increase income is to progress in work, including by moving into more skilled work. What's, what's the government doing to fill skill vacancies? My noble friend is absolutely correct, um, but we are providing support, as I said, of, uh, of around 20 billion this financial year to help help families with the cost of living. But the but but the most important thing must be to get people into work, and our expanded multi-million multi pound plan for jobs is continuing to target tailored support so that universal credit claimants, including those who are already in work, can access support they need including, as my noble friend says, skills development. This is really important because it, to get them into work in the first place, but also for, so that they can progress in those jobs and earn more for their families. This below inflation, this below inflation increase to Social Security is in real terms a disaster for the poorest and most desperate people in our society. There's no doubt at all about that. Can the Minister explain why the Government are once again attacking the poor, making them even poorer, while the rich are getting richer in our country and in society today? 
As I've said um, before, my Lords, um, we are looking after the poor. We, we, no, we are, we are investing in, in increasing in benefits. We are giving, um, as we heard on the 3rd of February, we are giving energy bills rebate. We're giving £144 million of discretionary funding to local authorities. Um, we are giving a council tax rebate um, to people in, in Band A and D, and those people are 80 per cent of, of households in this country. So, my, my Lords, the Government is doing everything it can and will continue to, to monitor this situation for those people that need our help. The noble lady talks about the importance of getting people into work, and yet the maximum reimbursement for childcare has been frozen since 2005. The cost of childcare has doubled since then. Currently, in 99% of local authorities, the cap does not cover a full-time place for a child under two, and in 9% of authorities, it doesn't even cover a 25-hour part-time place. What plans does the government have? to review the reimbursement of child, child care costs for parents and people on benefits. The Noble Labour brings up an extremely important point. In, in order for many families to get back into work, they do need good and affordable childcare. And so you, uh, universal cl uh, uh, credit claimants can claim up to 85% of their registered childcare costs each month. Um, compared to 70% of those with tax credits. But also, we are giving free childcare to in England for, for 15 hours a week to all three- and four-year-olds and to disadvantaged two, two-year-olds, doubling the work for, for the working parents of three- and four-year-olds to 30 hours a week uh, if they are claiming benefits. We've also introduced tax-free childcare, my lords, and, of course, if a universal claimant, uh, benefit claimant requires uh, emergency help in that first period of time before they get their first paycheck, we have a flexible support fund which is non-refundable. My lords, inflation is a malign and silent thief that, as we've heard from all sides, hits the poorest hardest. Beyond the obvious mechanisms of raising interest rates and switching off the printing presses, there are nonetheless things that ministers can do to alleviate the cost of living crisis. We can bring down food prices by lifting tariffs. We can make it easier to build homes. And not least, we can cancel the planned rise in uh, national insurance. Does my noble friend, the minister, think that there are levers that the government could be pulling now to mitigate the impact of this uh, terrible scourge on the poorest people? I'm, uh, I, I think the question that Noble Friend asks is probably a little bit above my pay grade, but I will go back to the point that the government is closely monitoring the situation with the Bank of England and will be looking at all of these issues as we move forward. My Lords, the government's decision to cut the universal credit uplift has left hundreds of thousands of extra children in poverty. Following Labour's lead in reducing the taper rate to allow those on low incomes to keep more of what they earn is indeed a welcome step. But what else is the government doing to make up for the biggest ever cut to social security, to tax hikes and a cost of living crisis? My Lords, our long-term focus um, for all families is, it, it remains on continuing to support parents into and to progress in work. This approach is based on clear evidence about the importance of parental employment. That is where we are putting our investment. Particularly, it is where, in, where parents are in full-time employment it, and it substantially reduces the risk of poverty and it improves the long-term outcomes for children. In 1919-20, a child in a home where all adults were working is around six times uh, less likely to be in absolute poverty. My Lords. My Lords, my Lords I thought the question from the noble Lord of the Palette of Dalham was about um, values of benefits received by families with, with children. That's where the greatest need is. And the answer he got, the government had no plans. What are the reasons for it? Um, sorry, I, I didn't quite understand the question, my lords, but the, 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 um, 
We have no plans, my lords, to change the two-child two policy. I will look in Hansard, my lord, and if that's the wrong answer, I will make sure the noble lord gets a written answer. My lords, the noble lady the minister has told us now six times that she is monitoring the situation. But that's precisely the problem. What is needed is action, not what watching or observing. I well recall a Scotland-England game many years ago where the Scotland goalkeeper, Frank Haffey by name, monitored the ball going into his net nine, <laughs> nine times. <laughs> The point is he was supposed to stop the ball going into the net. Could the minister get the government to do something other than Frank Haffey? My Lords, the 3rd of February was not long ago when I think the government did do something in its announcement on cost of living, when it supported, uh, gave significant financial support to most households uh, up to the about three hundred and fifty uh, pounds a head uh, a household to help with energy costs. It gave the energy bills rebate. It gave one hundred and forty four million of discretionary funding to local authorities. And that, my lords, is action and not just the monitoring. Yeah. But the monitoring yeah. is important. Yeah.